today gonna do a little gabbing about what's been going on mm -hmm. Danny Woodman over here and of course our intrepid producer lurking behind the desk over there he is lurking as he does uh, Nick Lanciano we are glad you are with us here today thank you uh, Keith Rierick says he's already shared this broadcast we appreciate that um, today we've got some neat stuff to share with you um, Shane has once again I don't know if you know, but Shane Spiel is kind of a, a compulsive collector <laughs> of antique instruments. If you follow his uh, him on Facebook or anywhere, he often <laughs> posts pictures of some of his acquisitions. And one of the recent ones is a diddly bow, an old homemade diddly bow that he estimates is 100 years old. So of course he had to get it strung up and do a little picking and grinning on it. So he put a video together. We're gonna to be running that today, sharing that with you. We're happy to have that. Uh, and we're glad all of you are here with us. I have the comments pulled up on my handy dandy device here. Had to mash far more buttons to get this up than I should have because you know, we live in an age when we have to prove to machines that we aren't machines. So. <laughs> Zinger and for you. you. Got some leftover zingers from last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Well, I was going to say, and, uh, you have to show it who's boss. Yeah, you, right, you right. just mash Ow. harder. You mash harder to show it mm -hmm. who's boss. Um, so, uh, one of the reasons I asked Dan to step on today uh, is that tomorrow we're going on a little bit of a road trip adventure. Road trip. Uh, Dan, myself, uh, and our wives, Mrs. Giddy, Dawn Baker, and Lulu mm -hmm. herself, we're hopping in the, somebody's vehicle, we're not sure yet, and heading up to Westbrook, Maine. I don't know if you have seen on Facebook, but our good buddy Steve Richard up there has organized, uh, uh, he's called it a CBG Madness event. Of course, Steve 
runs uh, mainly CBGs and does his building up there in that area. Well, he's put together this event up at a, a, a gastro pub, I think they call it. Gastro pub. Frog and Turtle? Yeah. Of the huh? Frog and Turtle in Westbrook, Maine. I'm excited. Yeah, here's what he writes. Four great artists are going to be there. Daniel Cook, Boba Funk, Michael Young Band, and Fat Knuckle Freddy, who we met, well, I met, and Nick met, uh, at Marty Tauber's main Cigar Box Guitar Festival several year, couple years back. Um, they're all going to be playing some Cigar Box guitars in their sets. Uh, there's going to be four or more guitars uh, given away to raffle winners, um, CBG builders and vendors, enthusiasts on hand to answer questions and give demos, and of course, contingent of the Giddy Crew going to be up there uh, hanging out, sampling the fares mm -hmm. of both gastro and pub sides of the uh, I'm especially excited to try some frog and turtle, right? I hear it's delicious. So, yeah. like so. a casserole, perhaps? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Perhaps. Macaroni and frog? <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it reminds me frog. Mm. <laughs> I have had turtle soup before, and I think I tried frog legs once. I think I tried them once. I don't But remember. I'm not sure that I would order either of those two things mm. on purpose again. But anyway. Frog and turtle. I don't think any actual frogs or turtles are involved in uh, what's going on there. But anyway, uh, it reminds me of some other road trips we've taken in years further and further past mm -hmm. now. The first two Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festivals, which is coming up, and the next one's coming up in just a little over a month, I believe, uh, down there in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, Dan here helped me. Uh, load up a rented van with mm -hmm. giddy goodies and head down there and set up a booth. It's first year, time. first year went great. Yeah, there we weren't any troubles. Moving the first, car first year. That's right. Loaded it up. Off we went. No trouble. Second year, a little bit of trouble. A little bit of trouble. <laughs> that was a little bit of a hurricane. Trouble. A little bit of a hurricane blew through. I'll never forget. We're all set up and the rain. It's getting grayer and grayer. Shane Spiel pulls in in his minivan starts unloading his gear. He gets the last cigar box guitar unloaded and the sky just opens up. So Shane throws it all back in the van, poof, off he goes. <laughs> I didn't know Shane as well back then. I'm like, that was Shane Speed. <laughs> Later in the day, which hurricane was worse. that? That wasn't, that was Irene. It was Irene. Hurricane Irene. Yeah, it got worse. Mm. The rain came oh, and yeah. went. Then at the end, the very end of the day, the, the wind, here comes the wind. I have five guys hanging on to my tents to keep them from blowing away. It was a good time, good times. Only one suffered. Yeah, yeah, that one got taken apart. Not a guy, the tent. Taken apart, four parts. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to be heading down, or up there, oh. Westbrook. A little bit shorter drive to get to Portland, Maine, than it is to get to uh, York, Pennsylvania from mm -hmm. here. I see Marty Tober out there. Hopefully he'll be seeing you tomorrow, Marty. I saw Burton Philbrick and Mark that he's going. Uh, hopefully all of the Maine and New England, Upper New England contingent of CBGers will be there. It should be a good time. Here's some good music. Um, speaking of making good music, what you been building? Well, my latest one, I was trying to remember what brand it was, but it was a uh, white cigar box with shiny silver writing and emblems on it. Sounds like maybe an Alec Bradley or something like that. It's like a shiny yes, white, shiny, shiny silver. Oh, my father's. Did it have the scalloped corners? No, no, they're no. Not silver mostly white. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's a mystery. So I did a flat black neck on it. Nice. Black fretboard, chrome sound holes, went fine with that silverish look. Mm. Just should have brought it. Should have brought it. Maybe next Should've week. Should have showed it off. Next yeah, week. Buddy. Um, I, I know we're doing a lot of talking here at the, the start of the show. Um, I wanted to, we, we were talking before the show started about different instruments and weird buzzes and things. And we'll bring that back up a little bit, uh, a little bit later, maybe in the third half of today's show. I finally have finished my mandolin sea shanty tablature songbook. This is the rough, not 
rough draft, but this is a draft print of it. 52 sea shanties in here arranged in tablature for mandolin, of course, with full lyrics and chords. So we'll be singing and playing a shanty or two later in the show. It's a lot of shanties. It is. But for now, as a break from the talking, we have a video to share with you. Which one is it, Nick Lanciano? Looks like Shane. Oh, we're going right in. We're going, we're jumping right in. The hundred year old diddly bow. All right, get ready. Here he comes. Hey, Giddy Gang, check this out. sound of that? That is a 100 year old, if not older, one string guitar that came out of Texas. Uh, Stevensville, Stevenville, Texas. Um, I got it from a seller in Azel, Texas. And uh, when it was sent to me, the string wasn't on there. No bridge. It was just a one string guitar. Now this has, I've got the specs here. It's 21 inches long. The scale is 17 and a half inches. It is made with some really thick, um, the quarter inch wood here for the soundboard and the back. There is a thinner piece here that was bent around. The neck goes the whole way through the body and is butted to the back. And if you cut, it's gonna be tough. I can't get it in here with the light but you see the neck actually goes along the bottom on the inside. So this guitar has a heavy lacquer on it. The frets are made from big roofing staples and whoever made it took their time and engineered the whole thing. It's really cool. The only thing that they did wrong was the frets. They didn't know about proper fret spacing. Uh, so I'll play the frets exactly as they have them set here. So you're getting a lot of microtones, uh, just it's, you know, out of tune. But in messing with it, I realized that a couple of the frets are close. So those are the ones I was playing at the beginning of the video. Second fret really sounds like a third fret on a guitar. And the fourth fret sounds like the fifth fret on a regular guitar. Mostly in tune. Then if I go to the 5th fret, it is almost like the 7th fret. I have to bend it a little to get it in. If I go up here, it's a little too high. So this is just one of the greatest joys I have in collecting antique folk art instruments is if I have a chance to string them up and make them play again because then it tells us what they sounded like back in the day you know it's one thing to have an instrument and you know you get to see it and you get to check it out but to actually hear it um just it is a thrill for me now I used a um being that it had a little nail bit here I figured that's what they uh, put the string on and so I had a tenor banjo string uh, from an old pack that had a loop end so I put the string there and this is like a 0.022 um, it has a hand carved tuner and the nut itself here was cut the whole way through or it broke the whole way through so what I did was I had a piece of roofing staple and you can sort of see here, I just wedged it to get close to the nut. So the string rides high enough that it rides over the other roofing staples. So there's this one. Um, I did show off some more photos of this over uh, on Facebook. I now have a page for the Cigar Box Guitar Museum. 
If you're on Facebook, just go up to the search bar and search Cigar Box Guitar Museum and you'll find the page. I'm starting to post a lot of things on here. So I figured since I was showing this little guitar, I would show a couple other little guitars that uh, I recently got. This is a Cigar Box ukulele and it actually has the guy's name and every and date on the inside here. And it says Arturo Langanelli uh, from Rue de la Fontaine, Paris, Illinois. So somebody who took their name and gave their name an Italian, either the guy's name was really Arturo, Arturo Langanelli uh, or he was having fun calling himself an Italian luthier. I'm not sure which or the other it's, it is. Uh, I haven't been able to track down the name. Um, that's actually one of the reasons I created the Facebook account for Cigar Box Guitar Museum. I will be posting this on there and asking people to help me track down this builder. Some people are better at Google and research than I am, and some people have better resources. So that'll be coming soon. This is almost playable. I need to make a bridge for this. On the one string, I used a CB Giddy uh, bridge and I cut it down. This is one of CB Giddy's K style floating bridges, and I just cut it down. For this, I'm not sure what I'll use yet, but it'll be a floating bridge. And the maker actually put pieces of wood here to support the bridge so it didn't crush the box. This is in awesome condition. The neck is an old Maybell uh, ukulele neck. One thing I need for this, and maybe if someone's watching you can help me out. Uh, these old uke tuners had the screws here. Well these two are missing the screws and I need to get the proper screws to go in there so they hold tension. If anyone knows, or if anyone has a junk drawer with old ukulele tuners, contact me. Um, ShaneSpill at Yahoo.com. Contact me through Facebook. You know, you can get a hold of me. All right, so this is uh, going to sing again, too. And it's so solid that this will probably be my performing uke. Uh, as long as it plays okay once I get it done, I'm pretty excited. Let's keep going. Uh, here's one. I uh, This actually has a neck that needs fixed. But this four string was found in Maryland. Hand carved tuners, a neck that just goes onto the body like this, I, it needs glued back, and four strings. Again, the frets are not properly spaced, but the frets are cool too because they're toothpicks. They're either toothpicks or just little pieces of wood. And uh, there's the discussion thread on Cigar Box Nation right now, it's on the front page of the desktop version, uh, on doing toothpick uh, frets. And I used a picture of this for it. There's a cool little inlay of an elephant right here. Um, so this one I hope to get playing too. It's going to need a new tuner. A new hand carved tuner that I will do my best to duplicate. Let's move on a little more. I showed some pictures of this. This thing's wild. This is not handmade. This was made in a factory. This is the Little Joe instrument. And it had four strings. It only had two frets. It played three chords. Open. It's one, four, five. So it's open. This fret. This fret. And it used to have a harmonica holder right here. So that you would play harmonica. And then strum with it to be a one man band. These were in the turn of the century. Uh, the Harpo Chord Company out of Columbus, Ohio. And this thing has a cracked soundboard. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it playing again. However, this is so simple that I want to make my own version. I just love this. I love the fact that the strings go through this void right here. And there's only two frets. So cool. I'm tracking more history down. This is awesome. I got one more for you. Okay, and this one I have pulled out years ago in one of our Cigar Box Nation TVs. And I pull this out, it's a contemporary instrument, but I want you to be inspired. This is a walkabout dulcimer from uh, Shady Grove Instruments out of Mountain Home, North Carolina. And this one is actually serial number 001. I got this many years ago. Now this is just like a regular dulcimer neck. 
you have the um, diatonic, yeah, diatonic fretboard. But it's, you know, it's almost half the scale of a regular dulcimer. So what it does is gives you a dulcimer easy, the, it gives you an ease of playing like a dulcimer, but it sounds like a mandolin. This is very simple. Now CB Giddy has his fret templates and on there he has marks for how to do dulcimer fretting. So if you did a half scale dulcimer fretting, you could come up with something like this and it's really, really effective. <laughs> to play simple to play so I just wanted to show this off to you to inspire you making a mini dulcimer um hold on I didn't come prepared for this don't go anywhere I'm gonna tell you what the scale length is all right scale length is 13 and a half inches so there we go 13 and a half inch scale you can use a fret calculator to figure out your frets, um, but this thing is just so cool. The way they made this, there's a bolt-on neck here, and they just made the trapezoid body. Um, I've used this on albums. It is just a lot of fun to have. So, there's a bunch of instruments, and uh, I just wanted to say hi. Thank you to everyone for all your prayers. I'm getting better. Um, I will be at the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival, but I won't be performing or being the MC. I'm just going to hang out. Uh, I am getting better. However, I don't have a lot of energy. Uh, getting over COVID with uh, the pneumonia that went with it, um, it doesn't take a lot for me to get really winded. So expect to see me there in a lawn chair just having fun along with you guys. Thanks, Giddy Gang. Thanks for uh, letting me do this long video. And uh, you guys take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. One more. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. He was going through all sorts of good stuff there, wasn't he? He always manages to find some... Uh, interesting things that one i can't get over that one uh that little, with that tiny little fretboard like three, three frets, frets. Yeah, it's like, what just do do for that? playing three chords <laughs> while you're blowing away on your harmonica that's bolted to the head style you only need three chords anyway come on people um so we were talking a little bit about buzz now those of you who have built homemade instruments which i think is most of you watching today you know exactly what we mean when we talk about buzz. And you probably also know how hard it can be sometimes to figure out what is causing it. What on a, a particular build is causing this buzz. So Danny, grab one of your one of your uh, locomotive builds there. Mm -hmm. He was telling us, you know, he builds his own boxes and uses one of uh, our standard fretted necks, but that sometimes, is that one that has a little bit of a buzz? No, this one sounds fine. No, nope, that one's good, but he'll build another one in the exact same style, and it buzzes a little bit. Like and of one. course, and I know Nick <laughs> manning the support desk, you have gotten questions about buzzing. Okay. A lot of buzz, buzz, buzz. Yeah, this buzz, one does buzz. it a little bit. I think that could still be action height. So anyway, let's get Sorry. to the what um, can cause buzz. All sorts of things. Now you could have a high fret in there. Yeah, on you a fretted have... instrument. If a fret isn't fully seated down into its slot or has popped up a little bit, then when you fret above it, the string actually touches that high fret a little bit. You can get some buzzing. I've had bridges sometimes where I don't sand it 
entirely flat and it's not sitting on the surface very well and that can give you a... Mm, yeah. Uh, well, you know on sitars, they actually use a wide flat bridge specifically to get that sitar-like buzz. And as Shane has shown in previous videos, you can actually do that on purpose if you want some of that buzz. Now, usually you don't, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you can actually cause that. So, you know, a high fret, uh, an overly warped neck, if your neck has back bow, then at the, the height of where it's bowed is going to be higher. You can get some buzz like that. Raising your bridge and raising the string action can help work around that one. So some of these things that cause buzz are what I would call like within the realm of traditional luthier, luthier work, you know, a high fret or this or that. Then there's the oddball stuff that builders of homemade instruments can run into. Like take for instance this time clock guitar. Old steel time clock face. I cut away uh, the soundboard and all and in so doing removed a lot of the bracing that was in there. So I had to glue in a bunch more bracing. But I, I don't know if you can see, but I attached this time clock face to the remaining part of the soundboard with screws and I used little decorative washers, you know, the little brass decorative washers that would take a flathead screw. Well, I was getting this weird metallic buzz. Like, what is causing that strings? Well, it turns out one of the screws was stripped, wasn't tight, and that washer was able to vibrate against the steel time clock face just enough to make an annoying buzz. And to make it even better, it was some kind of sympathetic frequency thing. It would like only do it. It's actually still there a little bit. It would only do it on like when the D string was plucked hard or something like, you know. So I'm like checking and rechecking the frets. Well, it was that, uh, it was that decorative washer being loose and able to vibrate. Now Danny on that uh, little mandolin, this is actually um, <laughs> this is actually built from our tenor Lely tenor uke kit that I restrung with steel strings a while back and tuned to it's technically octave mandolin tuning G D A E. Well, I was getting a weird buzz on that, and I'm like, what is causing that? I thought it might be the pickup wire inside there. I finally realized. And probably can't see, but there's a screw going down through the tailpiece right into the soundboard. I realized that the tailpiece was holding the string ball ends just at the right distance from the soundboard that when I would hit the high E string, it still got a little bit of a twang to it there, but it would just make this horrible, nasty, rattly buzz. Well, I pop that screw in there, and it still got a little bit of a little bit of twink to it. Really dig in, but Rob Roble hasn't had a buzz in years. <laughs> well, come on, Rob. There's a cure for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, all the things that can cause buzz, loose bits, like you know, homemade instrument builders. We like putting box corners on mm -hmm. and we like gluing in grommets a sound hole inserts and and doing all this stuff there's a funny thing about vibration once this instrument starts vibrating anything loose marty tauber saying a loose tuner knob mm -hmm. screw I've like, like on uh, sealed gear tuners where the knobs attach with little screws that being loose oh so many things it's fun, isn't it? Building instruments out of uh, it's most definitely not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a video for you from Kale uh, that we're going to run today, and then we've got a kind of a blast from the past video going back a few years 
uh, to Tyler Foss and Kim Starling and myself playing and singing a, a good old song, Ramblin' Boy, I believe, or is it Rollin' Home? Ramblin' Boy. Ramblin' Boy, one of my favorites. Um, so we're going to run the video from Kale right now, then we'll come back. Daniel has to step off and do the Lord's work elsewhere, mm -hmm. so we'll come back, uh, gab a little bit more, pick and sing a couple of sea shanties, and send you off into the weekend, hopefully. Um, so here... Well, howdy folks. Happy Sunday morning. I'm sitting here with the Carver banjo kit that I just completed. And if you've been, you know, subscribed to my channel, you've seen probably the last four or five videos I've been working on this thing here. It's been a fun little project. Did kind of a video diary on it. And if you're a subscriber to my channel, you also know for about two years now, probably over two years now, I've been doing a song every Sunday morning for you guys. So um, we're going to put the two together. So I'll do a Sunday morning tune on the uh, Carver banjo here. I'm going to try to make it a one-man band effort. I got the harmonica here. And then around my foot, I know it's out of the frame, but I got a tambourine around my foot. So if I tap my foot, I get that jingle. And I'm going to try to do a little one-man band for Jambalaya here. And I realize I'm playing a uh, five-string banjo with a pick, which, you know, a lot of people say that's sacrilege. But uh, I think it's going to work for this tune. So here's a little Cajun Sunday morning for you, a little Jambalaya. today. I haven't done any shout outs, but we got Gordon Persglove from over there in the UK, Michael Capato uh, being uh, subliminally messaged into making a purchase from Shane's site. Tom Petrie out there. Jason Mills, glad to see you out there, buddy. Congratulations on getting one of your Driftwood guitars into the hands of Mr. Bonamassa. Ma Giddy out there, been laid up a little bit with a bum ankle, but starting to move around again. Uh, actually want to send a get well soon out to my dad who ran into a little bit of trouble this week but is back home and recuperating as well. Ron Swayhart out there. Jimbo Bert who's gonna... Hi Jimbo. The time fast approaches when Jimbo is gonna be taking over the Giddy Gang show from what I 
bringing in his own guests and everything. So we're looking forward to that. Jimbo visiting the great Northeast in uh, two or three weeks. Then we're all gonna head down to the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival and have a good old time, so. Um, one other thing that I should have announced earlier and forgot, if you get our news email newsletters or if you follow our Facebook pages, you already know that we're having a little bit of a clearance sale at CB Giddy, clearing out some of the stuff, the random things that have been building up around here, discontinued items, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, some great deals on some humbucker pickups, what uh, Shane calls the zebra style, where one half of the one coil is white and the other is black. We're blowing those out for $6.99 each, which is a pretty darn good price for a Telecaster style humbucker. So you can you can load up on some of those, all sorts of knobs. We just added some string packs today. Uh, one of our a little more. Uh, well, some of our earliest string packs, back in those days, I was a big fan of uh, what you might call major, open chord major tuning. So like, instead of GDG on a three stringer, I do G, G, B, E, which is the same as these three highest pitched strings on a guitar. So you could use partial guitar chords when playing without having to learn all new chord forms. Well, it turns out the open D string sets, D, F sharp, A, have never sold all that well. And I finally decided, let's let those go. Maybe come up with some new signature string packs and other things, like that string set right there is a recent one we added. Um, so you can get those open D major string packs at quite a discount right now. So everybody else is raising their prices. By God, we're lower in some of ours so that's that is how we do Ken Hope out there good to see you buddy um, and a bunch of other stuff on clearance if you go to cbgiddy.com you look over on the left hand side where the categories are you'll see clearance on there click on it and get yourself some deals so I've been talking about this here uh, mandolin tablature songbook I've got the rough printout of right now. I'm going to be going through and checking and editing. Um, so we're going to do some of these old sea songs today. Danny's going to be strumming the little uh, octave mandolin, I guess we'd call it. I'm going to be strumming this old time clock guitar. I guess we could scoot in a little closer now that Dan is. No, don't break it. So this is a good old sea song, not really a shanty. It's more of a song about the sea and an ill-fated trip.
in that one, isn't there? Yeah. <clears throat> and then I got a frog in my throat halfway through. That helped. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us on this Friday afternoon. We are glad you are here with us. Um, somebody earlier, I can't remember whom, wanted a train story uh, from my recent train adventure. And I'm slightly embarrassed to say I have not yet done any writing or done anything with the photos and videos that I took while on that trip but I did have one one thing to share I've talked in the past about the the hobo tags the train rider marks um, that the people who still are out there riding the freights will make on some of the freight cars and I've taken pictures and I wrote a blog post about it well all the way around the country anytime we pass a freight train at a slow speed or roll through a yard where some freight cars were parked I'd be looking out the window for some of the marks I recognized and saw some and it was it, you know each time I'd smile a little bit because seeing some of those names was kinda like seeing an old friend the old friend you've never met before um, but it was more towards the end of the trip, can't remember exactly where I was, somewhere on the east coast, and I, I was feeling ready to be home, you know, getting towards two weeks of traveling, most of it on trains. I was getting ready to be home, and I saw one of the marks that I recognized the best, um, done by a person who goes by the name of Freight Bandit, and he'll often put a little a little phrase, a little snippet of, of something there, often somewhat philosophical, along with his his mark. And on this particular one, his, his message was, stay home. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, huh, well, you know, who knows what caused him to write it, or who he was writing it to, but at that moment it kind of resonated with me because I was feeling like staying home for a while. But of course, if all you do is ever stay home, then you don't get to see see the world and see how great it all is out there. So that's just one little brief uh, story of, of life on the rails. Mm -hmm. Got anything you want to sing? Well, it's not a sea shanty, but that's all right. a song about the sea. One we all know it. Ah, close enough, right? Yeah, well, in this in this new songbook, it's not just shanties. It's songs about the sea, uh, about sailors, about all sorts of different things. Basically, if it had to do with sailing, the ocean, or anything like that, I put it in the book. So you're you're capoed there, Mister. There's a lot of chords in this one. I'll see well, if I remember it. I haven't played it for a while. All right. We got time. There's a port on a western bay and it serves a hundred ships a day. Lonely sailors pass the time away and talk about their homes. And there's a girl in this harbor town and she works laying whiskey down. They say brandy, fetch another round. She serves them whiskey and wine. Braided chain made 
the north of Spain A locket that bears the name of a man that Brandy loved He came on a summer's day bringing gifts from far away But he made it clear he couldn't stay No harbor was his home The sailor said, Brandy, you're a fine girl I had no idea that's what you were about to launch into. That's <laughs> well, awesome, man. That's a, not an easy song. Actually, we'd send that one out to our good friend Dave Vashon. That's one of his favorite songs. <laughs> I didn't know that. So next time we're over there, you gotta. That was yeah. That was that. one I just came to me. You know when you thought of songs, I'm like, yeah, why not? Yeah. Well. So, you know, speaking of sea songs and, and being on the water and all of that, I'm going this evening to uh, take my safe boater course uh, here in New Hampshire. They actually make you pass a, a course and get a safety certificate. Back, back home in Ohio growing up, my uh, grandfather had me take the power squadron course so I'd know what I was doing, but I think in Ohio about anybody can plop a boat in the lake and go tearing off across the water without any sort of training. Maybe they just told you that because your reputation preceded you. <laughs> well, I guess. We'll tell this guy yeah. he needs a license. Well, you know, New Hampshire's motto is live free or die, but, you know, you got to get your car inspected every year. you got to have a boating license. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, here is a Blast from the Past video of my good friends Tyler Foss and, of course, Kim Starling. Joining, what stage are we on in this one? The old school troop. Yeah. The, uh, the big mill stage. The big mill stage over on the other side of the room. All right, so here we are doing Ramblin' Boy, an old Tom Paxton song. <laughs> Thank you. 
those blasts from the past. And now, a little something for all of the mind readers out there. All right, there you go. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, yeah, I still got some jokes left on the sheet, folks. Brace yourselves. Um, you know, I was talking about this new songbook being for the four-string mandolin tuning. Uh, of course, some builders out there have built mandolins. I know Louis Lamana has built a good few of them. Um, I do have a sea shanty songbook for three-string open G cigar box guitar as well. Uh, it now needs to be expanded to include all of these additional shanties that I've uh, arranged, but uh, you can't say that. Well, I didn't say it. I thought it. We find out you go home and Mrs. Giddy slaps you. It's like, I, saw, I heard what you thought. <laughs> Too many mind readers out there. So, I think, unless there's any more ado to have, do you have any more ado? Um, just keep in mind, there are, you know, the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Fest coming up. Uh, the Georgia International Fest is at September the 11th. And also the Huntsville, Alabama Low Mill Arts and Entertainment Cigar Fest in its 17 years. Marcel just requested the mermaid. What? The mermaid? Yeah. I just did the mermaid. Yeah. I did one of the mermaids. <laughs> There's another one, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know a little bit of it. Are I know how it ends. Well, the reason I'm taking the boating course is I'm going up to look at a, a little motorboat tomorrow that my friend Frank Lanford is selling. And I think I learned, might have learned the mermaid from him. Both mermaids uh, from <laughs> Frank Lanford. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to send you off into the weekend with the Giddy Gang theme song. Sing along! Mm -hmm.